Hello and welcome back, everybody, to Chicago Clash. We are now on to Group B. We mentioned earlier there's two groups, Group mm -hmm. A, Group B. Uh, they're all doing their matches at the same time. We can go show those results really quickly to show what happened during that first round. Looks like Jared, Hector, and Tyler all at the top of Group A. And Group B, we got Jake, Josh, and Ryan all at the top. And our next match is actually going to be in Group B. It's going to be Jake Gearhart versus Skydale Cruz. Super excited for that. We're going to have two... Very interesting deck list here for <laughs> many reasons. Very uh, this interesting. This matchup will go one of two ways. <laughs> yeah. So, Wait. I mean, we can just we can just start talking about it. Yeah, I, I think we just start talking about so, it so at Jake, a high level. Yeah. Jake is bringing. Oh, they're they're ready actually. So we can we can start talking Let's as they see set it. up. So we're just gonna see it. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, Sky versus Jake. This is gonna be control versus lost box but this is not any or normal control this is not any normal lost box <laughs> this is specifically pidgeot control oh no this oh, is turbo oh, hands okay so, no, so no no sky wrong, actually wrong leads yeah. so sky is playing control just yes. not playing it in this game particularly yeah. which is the the power of this conquest format the cool part of this conquest format however jake is running this lost box deck and it's not just any ordinary lost box deck it is Lost Box with a bunch of very special, unique choices. It's yeah. not. It's, it's basically not the same as what we saw last game. Yeah, not at all spi the same. A spicy Lost Box, and we'll kind of reveal details of it as things go along. But I think, yeah, that was it for Jake's turn. Yeah, I think it, <laughs> this was what I was telling Jake about before the tournament. Right before the tournament, I watched with Jake. I said, "Nice to see you again, Jake." I don't think your deck is that good. <laughs> and he's like, why? It's like, I think it's quite good. I haven't played that many games with it, but I think it's quite good. And I, and I told him the reasoning for it is because once you cut Greninja for Charizard, like Jake did, mm -hmm. there is a Radiant Charizard in this deck. Radiant Charizard, of course, is a very powerful attacker. But once you do that, your consistency drops so tremendously without having access to that concealed cards. And sometimes Sablezard basically lost by variants with the Charger can make up for that difference by using those Mirage Gate slots for Poke Gear and the like and Trekking Shoes and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Jake's not playing any of those. Yeah. He's, he's playing the four Mirage Gate still, playing the Radiant Charger still. And I think we're seeing that come into life here. Yeah, I, I'm really hoping he can get a solid game in with the Lost Box. Yes, I hope so I think too. There's some really cool strategies. Uh, we don't want to spoil it all in case he doesn't get to show them here. But right. we want to make sure he has a chance to, to do all that. Really quickly, though, we haven't talked about Turbo Hands. This is a new deck that uh -huh, is actually uh -huh. incredibly popular, uh, both online in general and with our competitors here today. So many players brought Turbo Hands as their right. second list. So we're seeing the first of those new kind of cards is the Mariadon here. Using its peak acceleration ability can or attack it lets you search up for two basic energy cards, attach them to your future Pokemon. It says future in the top right of the card. That's how you know if it's a future Pokemon. Uh, and the way this deck works is basically using Mariadon, using Electric Generators to charge up your Iron Hands as fast as possible. <laughs> and hey, uh, <laughs> can boss his orders this turn? Um, but yeah, you, you just want to charge up your Iron Hands as fast as possible and just spam Ampy very much. And the reason why it's really good is because of the new Iron Crown EX as well with its Cobalt Command ability. Basically, it makes your Iron Hands do 20 more damage, and they stack. So if you have three Iron Crowns, you do 60 more damage. Yes. Not just your Amp, you very much is, but your um, your arm, arm press. presses also. So you can deal with really low HP um, EX and V Pokemon yep. easily, or you can just... Oh my gosh. <laughs> We see the boss play actually working out for Jake. Sky Dude, let's passing. Go. All right. And Jake passing again with the... <laughs> but Sky top decking the Arvin means that this Iron Hands is about to go down. Oh, actually grabbing man. Switch Cart. Maybe a future booster capsule as well. Might not need the Switch sure, Cart actually sure. because of the future booster capsule. Yeah. But... This this Iron Hands deck, like you were saying, is really popular amongst the competitors right now. And I have a theory as to why one of the reasons why it might have been selected as a as a good option is because one, I mean the competitors think it's a good deck, but two, I think it it evens the playing field where the deck is really easy and it's also if but if it executes, it's really powerful. Yeah. So if you respect your opponents and say like everyone in this tournament's pretty good, I can't really outplay them. It makes sense to bring an easy deck and just to just to try to like roll the die on, right, on, right. on Iron Hands being good. And in this case, the die have rolled pretty well for Sky, considering that Jake doesn't have any board to, to deal with his hands. Right, yeah, it does get one energy off that electric generator. This deck is uh, very interesting to play. I don't know how much you've played of it directly so bit. far. Yeah, it is... Uh, sometimes it feels kind of high rolling. Right. Um, yeah. Sometimes it just works out totally fine, and your heavy batons don't get knocked out. The heavy baton is a huge part of the deck that we have not mentioned yet, but basically... It only works on Iron Hands in the deck because it has to have a retreat cost of exactly four. But if your Iron Hands with a baton gets knocked out, you can move the energy around, basically, which is super useful, super powerful. And we see three prizes with Amp very much Man. there on that Iron Hands. And we got another Pokemon, at least. <laughs> uh, oh, Jake opens up Roxanne. Struggling. That's cool. Roxanne is an option, but Sky's board is 
so gross. <laughs> <laughs> it's so crazy. This guy has not only one Iron Hands powered up, but that Iron Hands has that baton, has that gift energy also. So even if you are somehow able to deal with his Iron Hands, this guy gets to just draw a fresh new hand of, of eight cards. So, yeah. I mean, Jake is... <laughs> I mean, yeah, the, the, the other thing too, yeah, the, the benefit of playing the Radiant Zard at least is... You, can, you at least have a really low maintenance, That's easy true. attacker, and Sky's pretty open to getting Radiant Zarded very soon here. So the problem is Sky soon. actually plays the gift energies, yes, which is not super common right now. It's it was very common in Japan, kind of died down in popularity when it got released here. But Sky is playing those gift energies, which are super powerful for dealing with situations right. of recovering from losing right. your main exactly. attacker. So even though I mean Jake does have that Radiant Treasure as option, but not an option this turn because it's not fully online yet would mm -hmm. need two energies to attack we do see the poffin come down which is a good start from jake but i'm worried it's a little too late yeah. i mean sky is going to take another two prizes here and even set up that second iron hand even further so i, I i'm not seeing the line <laughs> i'm not seeing the win condition we will uh the, the win condition is gonna be uh roxanne sableye or something <laughs> Ro True. roxanne countercatcher sableye roxanne countercatcher sableye is probably the only way uh, the the classic cope play for lost box we'll see if uh oh wait no there's no psychic energies in this list there's no say oh that is not an option so there's no play <laughs> there's no play uh yeah there's a card that jake actually plays to deal with the iron hands we'll see if it actually comes out in this set now deals is a strong word it it knocks it out it knocks it out but it gets knocked out it, back but it does it, yeah knock it out in this case least. it wouldn't win win jake the game or even get him close really unfortunately yeah we jake we see jake is playing that transformer to start ditto that we saw jared play earlier right. but it's only useful during your first turn mm -hmm. so it actually just claws up the deck i'm not the biggest fan of it right now in lost box uh because of the amount of switches you need to kind of get it in and out for the more useful pokemon but it's definitely a card that uh thins out your deck more it's not bad it, yeah. i would say it's probably a little bit better than trekking shoes if you sure. don't play pokestop um because it's basically essentially playing fifth comfe if you start with it plus you can use it in niche scenarios to grab your greninja or or what have you or cram oh, rant there it is the oranguru oh, v oranguru v all right uh I, i'll explain the ability you explain the attack <laughs> so yeah sorry, so go the ahead. the ability is back order which is actually pretty relevant and pretty useful in this deck mm -hmm. the way jake has built it so once during your turn as this pokemon is in the access spot you may search your deck for two pokemon tool cards you can see if you weren't already caught off guard by the prizes uh jake is playing maximum belt <laughs> so the idea is you combo back order to guarantee your max belt when you need it and you can do things like charizard with maximum belt um and Kabalion ko a charizard ex or you can do things like <laughs> crisis punch plus max belt to knock out his rds right so though you have options oh no you can't do both because it's uh yeah you it's can't, a tool, you can't right, do it right. at the same time but the, the primary thing is the the zard combo and orangaroo's attack actually useful Ranger's attack, similar to Jake's beloved Deoxys V-Star, <laughs> using <laughs> Iron Hands' energies against them, actually getting the KO if you have that three energies on the Ranger and four energies on the Iron Hands. So it is a built-in Iron Hands counter, also built in consistency, of course, because the Ranger can grab for a Steel Stone. And, yeah. it's, and, and like we mentioned, Jared's Lost Box version doesn't have any Vs to utilize that for a Steel Stone, so it's actually just not playing it, even though it's such a powerful card in the Lost Box deck, mm -hmm. um, especially because you really need your chorus turn after turn and finding those choruses every single turn can be difficult without something like forest seal stone so ranguru is kind of like a two-in-one deal you get access to your maximum belt you get access to your forest seal stone your rescue board and you also have an iron hands counter built into your deck which is nice but iron hands counter not going to come online this game sky of mm -hmm. course only at one prize remaining yeah jake could crisis punch here if uh either cramant or enough energy does come down I'm not sure if... I mean, Crisis Punch into this heavy baton, though. I mean, yeah, the that's energy... <laughs> uh, if there's a vacuum, though, then, yeah, can, yes. can deal with it. Jake does play the vacuum. If you're able to vacuum, uh, you do operate the gift to you, but Sky's hand is probably pretty big right now anyway. Right. So it's not a big deal. So we're seeing the Nest Ball come down for Jake. Going to grab the Iron Hand. So probably it does have a way to get the Mirage Gate to potentially Crisis Punch. Or, I mean, you don't even need Crisis Punch. You can just Psychic, too, here. And still be fine, but yeah, needs True. to get the vacuum and needs to hope for the best. The 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 one positive thing here is that Sky has no other attackers really set up ready to go except for the Riot on. The downside is Sky only needs one prize card and could just yep. boss KO uh yep. the Gabalion or something and deal with it really easily. Looks like Sky is choosing to play 
the prime catcher in this list mm -hmm. and it's a little bit of a debate still which which is the better a spec either prime catcher or reboot pod is the other option for and oh, we see we're the, just seeing a fast and a boss. Right. yeah it was not able to get anything useful there so uh that's going to be it for that first game they're going to go and set up the second game now jake has the option to switch decks right sky has to switch to that control deck that we were kind of talking about yes. earlier before before we get into that next game while they go ahead and set up i wanted to quickly shout out our sponsors Cutter Tap has tons and tons of Pokemon TCG articles written by extremely skilled players. Their articles cover deck analysis, matchup descriptions, rogue decks, metagame discussions, high-level theory, and much, much more. You can see some sample articles there. Uh, Regional Champion Piper Lapine recently put out an article on control for EUSC that I learned a lot from. Some cool lists there. Along with the ranking of different types of control going into EUIC, I uh, definitely recommend giving that a read if you're either thinking of playing control or are terrified of it like I am. Uh, for the ancient box lovers out there, Hunter Drabeck just put out two whole articles going super in-depth on the deck and its matchups. You can check out all these articles and more over at CutterTap.com. Oh, I have to redo the first one, so I'm going to redo the first one. Chicago Clash is brought to you by Dead Draw Gaming. If you're looking for singles from Temporal Forces, you can grab what you need over at DeadDrawGaming.com. If you're enjoying the tabletop content here, Dead Draw Gaming's YouTube channel also has even more. We also have the relaunched Dead Draw Gaming podcast, where I bring on various experts from the team every episode to help you better understand the meta. We just put up an episode yesterday. If you subscribe to the channel before the next podcast episode, you'll be entered into a Paldean Fates ETB giveaway. They also have a new Patreon that you can join to support their content. Patreon supporters get access to bonus videos, discounts on Cutter Tap, and the Dead Draw Gaming store. Links will be in the chat below. Thank you so much to both Cutter Tap and Dead Draw Gaming for sponsoring. Um, any other thoughts on kind of what, what now is going to happen? Is either Control versus this list or Control versus the other <laughs> list? Um, what is what is Jake's other deck again? Do you remember? Off the top of your head. Uh, Zart. Sard. Yeah. I, it's looking bad either way. <laughs> it's looking bad either way. I I feel bad for Jake. Um, I think this deck is awesome and I want it to do well, but yeah. I, I really don't have faith in it. I, I, both, <laughs> I don't have faith in it, specifically in the matchup that is about to take place. Yeah. It is a very bad matchup if Sky can actually get set up and rolling. Right now, Jake does still have a chance because control sometimes does control things. You can uh, easily knock out the Pidgeot some, or the Pidgey before it becomes right, Pidgeot that's sometimes true. and that's just true. completely cut off their plan. So. We'll see what happens, but uh, Sky's control list is teched out to have some very it is. scary things to deal with Jake's, both Jake's decks. Honestly. Sky is probably the most proficient and powerful control player here at this event, mm -hmm. and I am looking to see what she cooked up. I I mean, I saw the deck list already. Yeah. I don't think I fully understood it at the time, so I'm, I'm looking to see how she pieces together the win. I think that's kind of... It's a little bit different from the Stormlash Control that viewers at home yeah. might be used to, right? Stormlash Control basically only has one win condition, and you play towards that win condition pretty much every time, whereas this Pidgeot Control that Sky brought has a lot of win conditions, and it's not about f always playing for a single one, but it's kind of like trying to solve a puzzle like mid-game and find the most likely win condition and start playing towards that mm. and kind of shift and, and pivot towards what you need to win a game. Yeah, and... That, that Pidgeot Control actually just recently won the Brazilian regional. Oh, did it? Yeah. Okay. So uh, it is a list that actually picked, did really well at a lot of different events recently. I know uh, Utrecht, there was like a ton in the top 64, and then it carried over to the Brazilian regional. Um, and then I think, okay, our player's ready. So we're going to go ahead and go down to game number two. We'll see if Jake can bring it back here. We see the Mawile attempting trap <laughs> starting against Radiant Zard. That's, that's a good start. Um, at least an instant call rest here. And it looks like it was just a pass then for, for oh, Sky. Oh, yeah. If that's so the there's case. actually a chance here yeah, for Jake. If, this is what we were talking about. <laughs> Jake needs to pull off one win with this Lost Wax deck. And oh, I think Kramer's this... prize. Not again, not again, the Cramorants, <laughs> when it needs to show up, it's not I mean, there. This is the downside of playing all these one-off attackers the way Lost Box does in this rotation. Uh, you, you get punished for situations yeah, like this. There is the heavy ball in the deck at least. Oh, wait, no, he plays two. Oh, right, he plays two. right, right. Jake it's genius. play two, <laughs> two Cramorant for some reason. <laughs> I mean, it worked out here. So It did, that's true. So Sky just having to pass over... And I, I mean, I think that's the only Rotom in the deck that's in Sky's prizes right now, which can be an mm -hmm. issue. All right, the Ditto and the Comfey coming down here. Gonna grab the Orangaroo and has the Seal Stone in hand. <laughs> so I think, I think Jake is getting this. He's just oh, gonna vacuum get and easily vacuum. get it and can cr Ditto into the Cramorant. Right. Wow. So that game is over. That is ridiculous. Ditto yeah. into Cramorant, Colrus and the Vacuum combined for that. Jeez. <laughs> Jake, after we talked so much 
<laughs> I t- I, look, I said there's, a, the there's a real deck. chance. Wow. <laughs> Able to donk. The second Cramorant <laughs> coming in clutch. Although, I guess we we steal stone, so maybe... No, we had to steal stone for the vacuum. So, yep. yeah, the second Cramorant did matter in this case. Assuming, assuming that the Cramorant prized was the was the Cramorant number one and not the Cramorant number two. Sure, Anyways, sure. Jake, yeah, you are more likely to prize something if you have two of it. Right. But. Yeah, I mean, yeah, with that starting hand, it probably still would have hit it anyway if it was prize. Potentially, the potentially. Yeah, the comb phase were decent, right? Yeah. So that's right. That is ridiculous. And now Jake has to play another game. Game three has to play Charizard, which is also not Gardevoir again. Gardevoir, the deck he was yes, known for for true. playing almost the entirety of last format. And actually, someone did bring Gardevoir. Gardevoir did happen. There is Gardevoir There's here. Gardevoir Michael somewhere. did bring Gardevoir. You will probably see it today. We will hopefully see it on the stream later today. Very excited for that. Uh, Gardevoir is a deck that's changed a lot since rotation, but we'll talk about it more when when the time comes. When but for it now, happens. Jake's playing Charizard. Jake's playing and, Charizard. And Charizard, it's not known to have a good control matchup. It's actually known right. to have a quite bad one. I don't yeah. know exactly, though, what Jake's list entails. We yeah, can we, pull that up real quick. We, we did see that a lot of the Zard, a lot of the decks that were brought today that do have notoriously bad control matchups, yeah. they're all, they're like almost all teched a lot of for them control. Are, yeah. May, maybe not teched enough to guarantee a win, but if you only need to win one or two games with it, then pretty decent chance. So we'll see what was grabbed here. No Spirit Tomb. And it looks like no yeah, tech at there, all. There's, but there's that doesn't an, mean it's over. Again, this is Pidgeot control. There's only, I think, one or two block laxes. So, uh, yeah, uh, there usually is only one in Pidgeot Control, yeah. so we'll see. And, of course, being Pidgeot Control, if you're not pure Snorlax Control, you also can get um, bossed. So, mm-hmm. so Charizard can boss around your Snorlax, bring up your Pidgeot, and then after that, they can retreat because that block ability is no longer live. So that can can come into action. And it uh, looks like Jake is actually playing Turo plus Palpad. Okay, okay, is playing the Turo Palpad. Okay, so it does have a pretty decent chance here yeah, to, has to not get completely... Uh, rolled over so uh yeah it's 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 so funny we didn't see the the control list the the text that were put in that would have really handily dealt with jake because that but but probably we might see it later today so don't want to spoil that uh since it wasn't shown on the stream both players have that ratings are though the the pidgeot control build just being able to actually take prizes sometimes uh as needed and have that win condition that's true uh makes this a much more dynamic matchup than you'd probably expect compared to just normal block lag stuff sometimes the best form of disruption is simply just taking a knockout yeah yeah <laughs> and i think that's what pidgeot control aims to do sometimes yeah there's so many times when you're playing it where the game just kind of plays out you just let your opponent do whatever you they want for mm-hmm. a couple turns and then you just completely ruin their chances of winning the game like you, they go down to two prizes and they just can't take those last two right. prizes no matter what they do um which is really powerful and really effective uh we, we saw a lot of it at the Brazilian regional just kind of completely stifle a chan pao player uh for part of it which was uh really spread it, it's just so cool how like many tools they can fit in their deck too they have yes. so many options uh you can see like the luxury v to do more hand disruption which mm-hmm. is actually pretty effective against charizard in particular you can take away their rare candies or whatever um, something like this mimic you could mimic end up you, mattering. having that safeguard ability right preventing damage from Charizard EX which is actually your main attacker a lot mm-hmm. of the time so and even Pidgeot EX if you try to do some sort of attack with that just completely gets, gets this mimic you is really annoying for Charizard to deal with especially because most Charizard players at this point including Jake are choosing to run this Charmeleon with with Flare Veil mm-hmm. and its attack is only 50 damage which right. is just isn't enough to really put a huge dent to mimic you you can of course attach and it's two energy too which is yes, two energy a big commitment two energy so to commit two energy to this Charmeleon which could prevent you from setting up your bench Pokemon they can now get gusted they can be an issue like for example Radiant Charizard can be an issue if you start running out of energy and mimic you with the 70 HP you can attach tools to it of course to make it have even more HP and we'll see if that ends up being the win condition for, for Sky. I think it's a great stall, stall condition. All right, we're going into the game. Boom. Already uh, looks like Jake going beginning. first here. Yeah, because Sky could choose to go second. And Sky, I mean, speaking of Mimikyu, looks like it's already on the board. Yep, that is the fancy Mimikyu ready to rock there. Look at the prizes. Nothing too bizarre here or weird on either player's side. Nothing that should be immediately relevant. Um... Roxanne can potentially matter in this matchup since Sky can take prizes actually on like normal stall, but we'll see here. Uh, Jake has, I th- I'm trying to remember what his actual Charmander split is. He has the 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 Ember Charmanders that do 70 or that do 40, and then he also has the other. I think he only has the 60 HP ones, and he might have one 70 HP one. But okay, uh, we were talking about the, the the Charmander splits earlier, how it's still kind right. of a debate. 
Um, and it could matter against this Mimikyu what yeah. you want to attack with. Yeah, because uh, uh, the damage counters can uh, definitely matter, especially against um, the Charmeleon if you are attacking with it. But this this Mimikyu is actually safe for so long. Yeah. Sky, if, if Jake doesn't have boss, this Mimikyu will just stay in the active and sit there and be mm -hmm. a, a huge nuisance. So uh, starting it is, is really good. It buys Sky so much time, of course. Yeah, and also I, I, I should have mentioned the Turo being prized can actually matter oh, later too. Yeah. Wait, that's actually terrible. Yeah. <laughs> wait, <laughs> I, like, I didn't, didn't process notice. that yeah. part. Yeah, I saw it and I was like, oh, you don't need a Turo. It's that's fine. actually awful. Um, it, it means that if Sky gets to hit even one Erica's invitation, and let me pull up Erica Erica's invitation for you all who haven't had the misfortune of playing against <laughs> Snorlax yet. But basically, Erica's invitation can force a basic from Jake's hand onto the bench. One Erica's invitation could be enough to seal up the game if you don't have access to that Turo. So we'll see if that ends up mattering when Sky chooses to go for that Erica's invitation, if Sky chooses to maybe airy first to see the hand before doing so. And we see Miss Fortune Sisters already getting rid of one Rare Candy and two Ultra Ball. Oof. Yeah, very powerful disruption card. Uh, just letting you grab the top five cards of your opponent's deck and discard any items you find there. Uh, they get some pretty good hits there and is going to instant charge to end her turn. Drew into the Chiyu mm -hmm. to allow her to mill stuff later on potentially, but uh, may or may not matter in this matchup. Jake drawing off the top deck. One more Rare Candy here. We're going to Rare Candy into Pidgeot, so that engine finally online. We've been seeing yeah, Charizard yeah. over and over again not get this Pidgeot right. out, but... It is online here, and now what will Jake do though? It's tough because you you can't attack, so you can't grab the boss this turn anyway. Yeah. That Mimikyu, that's oh, man. Starting it was really tough here uh -huh, for uh -huh. for Jake. Uh, you're never getting the Radiant Zard attack charged up anytime soon. And Charmeleon's kind of not a lot of damage. Right, can right. be dealt with by Pidgey. Potent oh, sorry, Penny. Yeah, I'm actually really interested to see what Jake does decide to do here. Uh, does have the Arvin in hand, so doesn't have to go for any other support of this turn. Can Arvin and try to set up just Zard potentially, or um, maybe just goes into that Charmian like you were mentioning. Uh, potentially forcing some early pennies to prevent hand disruption is an option. Is going to play the Arvin. See what he grabs here. Get an item and a tool card. Uh, again, the A spec of choice is the Max Belt, so not having that extra gust of the Prime Catcher kind of mm. relevant here. Uh, because, especially because Max Belt is completely useless in this matchup. Yeah. So we'll see what Jake decides to grab. Well, you here. could use you could use Max Belt to knock out oh, Chiyu, maybe. Noivern. Noivern as matters. well, but I don't I don't think Sky's going to go into the Noivern. No, I it's not for this matchup. That'll be relevant now. Uh, the the other thing that's kind of annoying too for Jake here is the Defiance Vest that can right. come into play pretty soon here, especially thrown onto the Mimi Q. Uh, if, if Jake yes. does take like a boss KO or something, this the Mimikyu is just not going to die anytime if soon. If Sky is able to hit Lost Vacuum off of uh, something like a Misfortune Sisters, and that gets discarded away, or either or Airy, that's an another option. Usually, these Charger decks are only playing one copy of the Lost Vacuum, so you can combine Mimikyu with the Defiance Fest, and suddenly the Mimikyu is impossible to take out. As we see Jake start chipping at it with that Heat Tackle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the other A spec of choice for control is that Hero's Cape, which is just very powerful tool card. Lets you get 100 HP. Also, would be incredibly stifling and uh, mm -hmm. allow this Mimikyu to just live for much longer than it should. We see the vacuum in hand already for Jake, actually. So if Sky is able to pull off an airy and get rid of that, that could be a win condition here. Yeah, we'll see. It's oh. gonna grab the airy. <laughs> Sky with the reed, potentially. And the vacuum and, and the ultra ball are getting the, out of there. Jake now gone. in a super stifling hand position here. Oof. Does have the Pidgeot. Can at least grab some cards next turn. Um, doesn't play things like research, but can grab an Iano just to see a bunch of cards. Ah, oh, man, that Mimikyu is so much more devastating than I thought it would be in this scenario. And yep. that, that block lax is there now, too. So yep. once that lax gets into the active... The opponent's active Pokemon cannot retreat. And again, without that Professor's Turo scenario to potentially get out of that sticky situation, there's the one switch in the deck, but that is it. Thankfully for Jake, there's no real liability on the board yet. Mm -hmm. So nothing like a Rotom that Jake <laughs> just, uh, just drew. Erica can happen. Yeah, Erica so. could happen <laughs> soon. And Sky doesn't know that the Rotom is in hand because Sky just, just saw she it. Just finished, yeah, it. Yeah, she just finished the Aerie. So 
I think the primary win condition that Sky is playing for right now is the Mimikyu win condition. I mean, that vacuum is gone, so you attach a Hero's Cape or you attach that Defiance Vest to that Mimikyu once Jake takes a prize. And that Mimikyu, it's, it's I mean, it's invincible. Right. Nothing can stop it, really. Right, yeah. The All best right. attacker, I guess, for Jake in that case would be Radiant Charizard, but you have to have five energies on there. And if you have five, then suddenly Sky can gust up anything that she chooses yeah, and, and you it's just, stuck. There's no energy. You only have the one switch, the yeah. one Turo that you can't even access right now. Right. It's so tough. And Jake doesn't know it either, but the Turo is at the top, top of the prize card, right. so he, he's not getting that anytime soon. So you can't even be like, oh, I'll just try to take some knockouts Ooh, and then try but to... Okay, Jake does at least get a knockout it, here. Jake does. Draws into that Charmeleon and the Fire Energy. This Mimikyu will go down. It's actually not bad. All right. Uh, we'll see if that Iono put Sky in a situation where uh, she does not have anything super useful here. See the energies, which you don't really need right now. Was that a... What is that Pokemon? I think that Noibat. was... Noibat. Noibat, yeah, yeah. Is going to do that quick search. Um, and yeah, being Ionoed out of uh, that potentially larger hand definitely can limit Sky's options here and forces her to grab... Um, I don't even know what you do grab here. Do you just trap the Pidgeot already with the Lax? I think you could potentially grab Rod and then go back into Mimikyu. And now that Jake has taken one prize, you can follow that up with a Defiance Vest. And mm -hmm. now that would prevent, that would make Charmeleon only do 10, a measly 10 damage. Yeah, gosh, it's not, not so nearly ridiculous. enough to get yeah, through and Mimikyu. And the vacuum's gone. Yeah, the vacuum's gone. I don't, so. I don't think there's two vacuums in the list. There, there might. No, I don't think so. I don't think he does. Yeah. So, so tough situation. <laughs> there's a defense. Yeah, there there. So I, yeah. I think that's what Sky is going for. I think that's the best case. You have to force your opponent to kind of like play more than just this Charmeleon. And so this play basically essentially forces Jake to go down the Radiant Charizard path, but there's just not enough energy to, to really do that. Yeah, and is, because the Artisan didn't get bumped at all, uh, was able to just use the Artisan to uh, get that Mimikyu back immediately. Yes. Technically, there are five prizes in play for Jake to clean up if you want to go around this Mimikyu. Mm -hmm. But, I mean... Easier said than done. <laughs> yeah, so so Sky can easily penny one of them up to prevent that from happening. And you can get to a board state where it's just lone Mimikyu. And also, this Pidgeot can't get one shot. So Jake will run out of Gust eventually if, if mm -hmm. that is the game plan. I believe that is an airy for Jake. Which might be the only support he can actually play this turn. We'll see. Uh... You could get some decent items, I guess, but nothing super critical that actually meant. Yeah, you just get switch carts, balls. That's pretty much it for an airy target. We see Radiant Charizard being picked up. I think Jake realizes that it has to be Radiant Charizard mm -hmm. to deal with this Mimikyu, but it's it's you're just burning so many resources <laughs> to use that Combustion Blast. Yeah, at least Infernal Rain helps you charge up the Radiant Zard quickly here. Allowing you to grab three basic energies, basic fire energies, and attach them any way you like. So that gets you most of the way there, but not all the way mm -hmm. there. And I don't even think there's seven energies in this list, honestly. No, probably not. Yeah, six energy is kind of the norm right now for Charizard. Um, and there's not even the Miss Energy either, which is important right. to knock out. Because so you, you could use the Miss yes, Energy yes. as your fifth energy, and that's just not going to happen. Misfortune Sister gets oh my two counter catchers, which shouldn't be relevant in this matchup anyway. They're not helpful in the matchup, but. Sky is milling fast. Yeah, you mill quickly, and Jake is more likely to to lose before time is over. And yep. you have thirty minutes, thirty two minutes left, so plenty of time for Sky to end the game before any tie shenanigans can happen. Yep, Chi Yu can uh, finish off the milling right whenever needed with its jealously singe attack. Uh, Sky does have the fire energy and a double turbo tube to potentially attack with Radiant Charizard when the time is right, but we'll see what Jake ends up. I think. Oh yeah, Jake just attacked for attacked for ten yeah, damage. 10 damage. <laughs> that vacuum That's being so gone bad. is really terrible. And right. Turo being the last up there in the top two prizes is also really yeah, it's not, awful. It doesn't matter right now, but it can as soon as that block lax actually comes up, it'll yeah. it'll be very very relevant very soon. Uh, I guess if that the meme he does ever get knocked out, um, we're gonna see a manual attach on these are there. So yeah, Jake has to okay. It gets to see the massive hand is gonna grab. Two counter. Oh, that's actually a pretty good grab. Yeah, uh, the counter catch is the main way Sky's deck actually brings up targets to trap right. with the block lack. So getting rid of two of those when there's only four total is uh, pretty effective. Now there is things like no, there's no oh, there's Silene. Yeah, so with Silene you can recycle those and potentially get more later. Uh, and I think Jake's gonna be forced to retreat and rod to get energy for this. Right, <laughs> this I, think so. I think so. 
Uh, oh, Aerie come down. Only gets a buddy buddy poffin. But now, something that's critical with this area is that Sky does know Illuminion is in hand. Yep. And now can immediately, easily go for the Erika's next turn mm -hmm. uh, if Jake is not able to Iano, which should be able to do because yes. has good yacht. Should have plenty in the deck. And now Jake knows to do that. And Jake probably wanted to do that anyway, if possible, because of how large his or uh, how large Sky's hand is at this point. I guess Jake. Now that Sky knows that Luminion is in hand, Jake might just play <laughs> Luminion himself. Maybe you just force Sky to have to find the Erica's, hope that it's prized or something. Sure. Oh yeah, that's that's the thing with Iano is if if Jake knows Erica's not in the hand, you don't want to play Iano to get them closer to it. It doesn't really matter though, because Pidgeot, <laughs> right? Oh, they have Pidgeot. Right, right, right. Yeah. So either way, Sky will make this board even more annoying for Jake. So many energy have to be used on this Combustion Blast. And actually, two of them are prized. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we saw the, the Hero Escape go down on the Rotom, which is pretty interesting. Because uh, with that on Rotom and not on the uh, Pidgeot, you have to Bravery Charm it to protect it from Radiant Zard Max Belt now. Um, but we'll see if that actually ends up being relevant later. Is going to grab the Iano. I don't... I was looking through Jake's deck while he was searching through it. I only saw one energy. Because two, oh, of, yeah, them, two prized, of them yeah. are prized. So I think it's six in total. Two of them are prized. Three of them are on the, on the board. This Radiant Charger cannot attack. Even if you retreat in Super Rod, you still can't attack. You only have four energies. Right. So I I don't know what... I mean, I think Jake knows that he has to take some knockouts with this Charizard in, in conjunction with Boss. But with the Hero's Cape on the Rotom... You can't, you can't really not, you knock can't out anything. anything yeah. on the board, right yeah. now, which is bad. <laughs> so I think, I mean, Jake is almost checkmated at this point. Sky mm -hmm. having such a strong early position, and the fact that Jake still has five prizes left to go, I mean, this is about as good as Snorlax could hope this matchup could go. Right. Jake playing that Iono to try and put the Lumini on the bottom, knowing that Sky knows now, but draws into the Rotom and Menifee anyways. Just so many liabilities <laughs> in the deck for this Charizard. And we're seeing the Silene go down. Going to roll two die here. Get double heads. AKA evens. Then you get to put two discarded items, or two discarded uh, cards in your mm -hmm. discard pile and put them on top of your deck. Does get one heads. So you can go ahead and put any one card. We'll see what she chooses here. It's going to be the Super Rod. Put that back on top of the deck. Can it's a charge into it now easily, but is going to, yeah, is going to get it. Now we're going back to Jake. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I wonder if he sees what what, what outs he potentially sees here. Uh, I'm assuming the outs involve drawing the exact right prize card uh -huh. on the next knockout. Yeah, uh, I think which so. Which is... Uh... <laughs> but doing 180 as Charizard and not knocking out anything feels so bad. Jake yeah. is just attaching more and more fire energy to this Charizard, but we're out. There's no more energy to go. And then that's one of the big reasons why this matchup is so tough for Charizard in general. It's not just the fact that you're limited in your amount of attackers and um, uh, just the, the way you, like, the, the amount of things you can actually hit, but just that your damage output is so low in this matchup because they just never take prizes <laughs> until they're going to win the game. Let's see Aerie discarding two Super Rod. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so these, I think that means that these energies are locked into place. Like you, once you receive this Charmeleon, it's, it's yeah, done. Those energies are in the discard rods. forever. They're oh essentially gosh. lost zone at this point, which means Jake is super <laughs> turbo locked. Mm-hmm. And we see the power of this control deck, why so many players chose to respect it here at this tournament. It's a deck that uh, a lot of, it's, it's getting a lot of hype and a lot of fear for EUIC. Yes. Uh, it seems like more and more people are picking it up on a regular basis. And uh, it's, there's the Erica's. All right, we'll see. There's Manaphy and Rotom to be grabbed here. It's going to grab the Manaphy. That Pokemon goes straight into the active spot. <laughs> and now Sky can just retreat. I mean, to be honest, Jake. E even Jake himself respected this deck, looking at the deck list, playing mm -hmm. the Turo, playing the Switch, playing the Pal Pad. Just didn't work out that yep. way. The Vacuum getting aried so early on, the Super Rods getting aried, the Turo being at the top of the prizes. There's really not much that Jake can do. This matchup is just so powerful. It's just It's just that powerful from the control side that if you don't have a dedicated tech, something like the Gengar we've been seeing online, sure. it can get really tough. Yeah, well, there's a bunch of different techs that people are trying at this event itself, and we'll yeah. see a bunch of those different techs throughout the day um, as the stream matches go on. 
But yeah, a lot of people took different approaches for how they try to deal with this terrifying matchup because a lot of people brought Zard. And uh, yeah, as we're seeing, Zard just has the terrible matchup here. Interesting note, though. Jake is the one coming into this match at 1-0, Sky at 0-1. Mm -hmm. So we will see the match scores even out. Yeah. Yeah, it's... that's that's kind of the uh, difference like, from what you'd see at a normal tournament, uh -huh. where it, normally it's Swiss rounds, so people with the same records get paired up. But because we're doing groups, everyone in each group fights every other person in that group one time. Right. So um, that's why you're going to see a lot of these mismatched kind of records happen, and it's totally fine. And it's going to lead to some weird things probably down the line uh notably the top two people i don't even know if i mentioned this top two people from each group advances yeah. <laughs> so i'll bring that up next time we, we show the results but that is how it's going to go and then we'll go into the top match the the top cut afterwards and we're seeing the tempting trap instead of the block here too tempting trap makes sense here because that means their boss's orders can't get you out of the retreat lock so tempting trap means that manaphy is stuck even if you do have boss's orders so jake needs to find his one copy of switch to do anything mm -hmm. but even if you do find the one copy of switch the most that jake can do is maybe evolve into charizard and knock out the mawile and then suddenly mimic you is back online this mawile can come back into play with super rod potentially so there's a lot that can go wrong for jake still even though he probably can take one maybe two more prize cards yeah. in, in during this game we are seeing the pal pad and for the Silene and the Airy here, has to grab the Silene, uh, particularly because Team Yell's Cheer is prize. Right. It's actually a pretty relevant and important card in these control decks to keep your, your loop so you don't deck yes, yourself out. Yes, yes. Um, and is kind of, I, I, that could technically be a win condition here if Jake could l live long enough. But uh, yeah, the fact that this prize is actually pretty relevant because uh, Sky is forced to keep taking that Silene with the pal pad and has no choice. Otherwise, uh, you lose out on any kind of looping ability. And grabbing that Aerie just wants to continually keep whittling down Jake's cards until it's time to just safely chi you mill for game. Yep. We see the Charizard being evolved, and the switch is in hand, so we will get one knockout here onto this Mawile for Sky to find more resources, for Sky into another win condition, maybe either get back that Mawile or go back into the Mimikyu, potentially. I think it's... A little it's getting a little awkward from sky's side but i think sky has definitely still got a control on things as we see the super rod bringing back the mawile quick search for the fire energy artisan for the mawile and we're just going to go right back into the lock and jake does not have turo so that if sky just continually announces that tempting trap i think jake is completely stuck yep yeah switch is gone turo prized not looking good here for jake We'll see if he uh, sees any any out here. There's too much time on the clock to really try mm -hmm. to stall out for yeah. a tie or anything. Ties are possible in this format, but there's there, there's just no way with how fast Jake bricked in game one. <laughs> Ooh, double tail, double tail. I think Sky's deck is large enough where it's where it's okay. Yeah, I th should still have one more pal pad too. Just gonna announce tempting trap over and over again. Jake drawing his deck slowly but surely. Uh, here trap, we go, the, the quick pass, tempting trap, pass, tempting trap, and we'll see. <laughs> There's Iano in Jake's hands, so uh, Jake just playing to his outs here, uh, especially with all this time, no reason not to. From our side of of the table, we can tell that Jake is pretty much permalocked, but Sky's perspective, she doesn't actually know if this is game yet, because right. she doesn't know if Jake plays Turo or if it's in the deck. So it's a little bit scary from the side of Sky, but I think... I think it'll be all right. Mm -hmm. Sky actually counting the deck, making sure that she can play this <laughs> Daisy's Help, which is a card that no other deck plays currently. It's basically your replacement for Peonia. It's much mm -hmm. worse than Peonia, but it, it kind of has the same effect where you get to look at your prizes and see if you do take a prize, what prize. Oh, wow. Sky's deck is really thin. It is. It has the one pal yeah. pad only, so has the pal pad soon. Use that for Silene and not flip double tails. Yeah, yeah. if Jake played something like Ashana or or something that shuffled only his hand and not Sky's, Jake would actually win this game, yeah, I think. Yeah, but, which is ridiculous. There's but, the foul pad. But I think in this case, because the only card that can shuffle your hand into your deck for Jake is Iono, I think Sky has the advantage here. All right, shuffling in Erica's Invitation and Silene. It's hard to tell how many cards are at the bottom of Jake's deck or how, how many cards are in Jake's yeah. deck right now. But that Silene's going to be kind of... The deal breaker here, 25% to whiff, we'll see. Silene. Double tails! Oh, double tails, okay, but we do have the potential of a Chi Yu win condition still. Yes. So even if yes. Jake has even if Jake has more cards... Jake needs deck, a lot more cards yes, to make exactly. this work. So now, 
Oh, but the the fire is on the model, which adds I extra see a fire confusion. energy in here. Okay, there's another for one for Sky. Okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, this is so weird now. But I think I think Jake's Jake's deck is too thin. Yeah. Jake will have to play Iono at some point, or but yeah, it's, yeah, it's he too has, thin. To, has to Iono here and ha hope that you win the deck war <laughs> somehow. Jake's uh, actually going to play the Iono now, knowing that Chiyu will happen, and I. I'm sure these players have counted how many cards are in, in the deck for both of them, but I haven't, certainly. So, the, Important to note, too, there is a fire energy that was pulled off prizes. Okay. So this Manaphy can be retreated once the Chiyu comes up. That's true. So can Miss at Fortune least knock sisters? it out. Miss Fortune Sisters, With are they going to get any items? Poffin. That's, one, I, even getting that is One item here, is yeah. not bad. And there, there wasn't a shuffle after the after the misfortune sisters. Yeah. <laughs> so the players are going to rem yeah. remedy that we, real we quick. We are. Uh, we're not going to be super. Uh, we're not going to throw out DPLs willy nilly, like you may see at a normal yeah. official tournament. Also, Our players doesn't are matter more. in this case. Yeah, it literally does not matter. <laughs> so. So we we just see. I think the pass over twenty minutes. Still plenty of time. Still plenty of time. The, the players are playing like their life depends on it. But I'm glad to see this this level yeah, of hustle. I, I think Jake knows that. Definitely something is wrong with the prizes yeah. here. Uh, definitely caught on at, at this point. Does okay. have the Daisy's help. So Sky, I think in this case, now that Iona has been played, Sky is going to use that Daisy's help to try and get access to this Yell's Cheer. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Draw two cards here. Can look at the prizes. So yeah, th th it's something impor important to note too with Daisy. Unlike his and Heavy Ball, you're not shuffling your prizes right. after this. You can keep them in the same spot, and you can write down where yep. things were. Yep. So... Uh, can easily make sure you grab that team yells cheer, no problem on your next knockout, even if it's just a one prize knockout. It's guaranteed, no problem. And I think is yeah, just gonna lay it out in the order so she knows what order to get things in. So yeah, can get the penny as well, along with that team yells cheer if a two prize knockout does happen. But probably is just going to uh, what do you what do you attack with here? You still need a lot of energy to attack with a radiant zard. Your Pidgeot's probably pretty safe to attack with. Yeah, just double terrible. It, on yeah, it. it can't get knocked out by anything. Plus, the Mawile is boosting damage, so I mean, it, it does enough to, to knock right, out right, right, anyways. Right. Yeah, with Tempting Trap. All right, and that makes it a little bit easier too. Yeah, so uh, even less HP. <laughs> so, Sky, Erica's here to basically have the option to take a prize without knocking out the liability, I guess. So you yep. can knock out this Pidgey, grab your Yells Cheer, make sure you have that perma loop going, and keep the Manaphy on the bench for later. This ended up being such a weird game. Uh... Yeah, it's a little <laughs> normal that the Yells Cheer was prized. I think Sky would have instantly won the game if it had not right. been, but I think and Sky is still in a, in a great position. I mean, yeah, big kudos to Jake for recognizing any, every possible out <laughs> and playing to those outs. Yes, that the was quadruple, a very real out. Tails. Yeah, playing for double... Silent Tail. Yeah. Two, two yes. individual ones is uh, uh, definitely uh, a, this is a, this is a game that a lot of players would have just conceded early, right? Um, and Jake had a had a, there was there was a potential to win there. Um, I guess I shouldn't say that before it actually happens, but it is looking much worse now. Um, now that that team yells cheer was grabbed. I don't know. Sky, I think, has access to one more counter catcher, which she will need to get this Manaphy back up into the active and mm -hmm. keep that lock going. She does know where the boss is, too, so if she takes another knockout, can grab that at some point, but uh, needs to gust up first. Basically. Yeah, there's nothing really <laughs> that you can knock out very easily at this yeah. point. Yeah, still too early to go into the Radiant Zard for anything as well. Mm hmm. Seeing the nest ball for the Charmander there. I think Jake, yeah, now recognizes that that line of trying to go for the deck out is just not going to happen. Ooh, Collapse. the Collapse Stadium play. So now there are only Charmanders remaining, but even those Charmanders are a liability now. I think Jake is kind of playing with Sky's mind a little bit, playing some mind games and saying, <laughs> hey, like now all my Charmanders, they can attack, but... Actually, in actuality, there's only one energy in deck and one energy in the prizes, so these Charmanders right. at max can do 30. They can't become a Charizard and use that, that Burning Darkness. Mm -hmm. Yep. Like I said earlier, the Double Rod got taken out a while ago. Uh, does this Pidgey ought here by using, um, I believe it was a Turo, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one turn, potentially, of not having it. Sky going into the Mimikyu now. Does have the Rare Candy, so it's fine. 
and yells cheer <laughs> the savior. Actually, it, it could end up being bad if Sky gets another double tails because <laughs> I think there's only one copy of Silene in the deck. Right. So we'll see if that ends up technically, mattering. Could technically happen, yeah. But, but this Mimikyu is, is a big problem for Jake, too, because the Charmeleon, the best attacker for the Mimikyu, is under that Char Charizard. So. Right. All right. Team Yells Cheer, shuffling those support cards into the deck, and now it is back to Jake. Yeah, uh, tough call for Jake here. You uh, you don't even want to retreat into it either, because nope. then you're losing your Zard energies forever. And you're just never attacking with Zard EX. Because, again, you don't know where your prizes are. You don't know where things are. It's just going to attack the Pidgeot EX. Has to go for a two-shot on it. We see boss onto the Pidgeot. Sky counting how many boss's orders have been played. Jake trying to go for that boss into boss play to get rid of yeah. Sky's consistency engine. And actually, a good time to do it, too, because Turo was just played. Yes, and we saw the Yelchir not grab Turo. Right. So the odds of that getting stuck there, pretty good. We'll see what was just grabbed off of that quick search there for Sky. 15 minutes remaining. A game that looked like it was definitely Skies has been going longer than expected and potentially could... Oh, oh one, one head. head. Gonna right. grab, going to grab Palpad for sure. <laughs> Jake was doing some sort of signaling to the camera. I'm not sure what that was. Yeah, two, another Tails, like six Tails in a row would have potentially spelled Doom for Sky, but just one Heads will be enough to save the day. Grabbing, if you have the pal pad, you can grab both Silene and Yelchir again. So you have many more flips to, to work with. Six more flips at the minimum. Yeah, this is this is one of two kind of loops you'll see in these control decks. The other one is being uh, Pidgeot V, mm -hmm. which was much riskier to play at this event with the amount of Spirit Tomb kind right. of running around to counter control. So it makes a lot of sense to go for this option instead and also just being able to cycle these supporters so this easily one, is really, really strong. This one's also more space efficient, this right. method, because you kind of need the Yell Cheer and the Palpad to cycle your other supporters anyways, like your Silene and, well, in addition to your Silene, your, your right. Airy and your and your Ionos, but we see the second down. boss, Jake going down to only two prizes. Still does not get the Turo, which is, and the Fire as well, which is tough. Yeah. The last so... two, the, the most important two prize cards are still there. <laughs> I think Jake was really hoping to pull those two cards because now this Mimikyu is stuck here in the active and there's not enough energy to really do anything about it. And certainly not enough bosses left either. I think at this point, Jake is hoping for Sky to make a misstep somewhere. And I think that's, I mean, that's kind of the benefit, I guess, of, of closed deck list is that Sky doesn't really know what what outs to play around. For example, Jake does play the Turo, but it is prize. Should Sky be playing around Turo? Is it optimal? Who knows? I think Sky at this point though is just going to pass and force Jake to show her something mm -hmm. that that could win the game. Yeah, there's no way for a Jake to knock out that Rotom in one hit and probably there only has sense. the one boss yeah. right now. So uh, if you can't get any freebie, then there's not really a way out of here and yeah. Double tails, but Double tails. it's okay. Doesn't matter at this point, yeah, because the team meals chair is back in the deck, got pal padded back in. Vacuum, second vacuum would be huge, but I don't think it exists in the deck. Charger mm -hmm. decks, because there's no more paths to the peak in the format, have been cutting down on those vacuums. So and we see <laughs> the IO yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. Jake playing around the Chi Yu. Oh. Oh, the table. Jake moving smacked a bit. the ring light. Uh, prize cameras, but it ended up going back into place, so it's all good. That's okay, Jake. We we get it. You don't have to be that angry. <laughs> <laughs> so just two cards here for Jake. Nothing super useful. Collapse is sticking, too. There's a quick search going down. Yeah, there's like nothing you can do with this max belt to try to take KO anywhere. This is uh, just... Hope, yeah, like you said, hope for a misstep. Uh, there's, there's no way the game goes along enough. It's just going to retreat and go for the heat tackle. Yeah. Oh, man. Retreat means that those energies are banished. Yep. Iono again. Oh, man. What do you do here? There, uh, there is no Pidgeot anymore. So, oh, but the Defiance Vest oh, comes no. online, and that is too much, I think, right. for Jake. Four turns now to knock it out is just going to do it and hope for there's no penny by that time and is a team meal sure oh no because uh it he does, tackled this zero. Minus, yeah, yeah, zero. Zero. i was thinking the charmeleon still yeah so jake just he tackles to do damage to himself pretty much all right and i guess uh yeah i think this is kind of jake just 
making it seem like he has well, giving an your, actual out. Giving your opponent prizes is, is good because it makes your Radiant Charizard take less right. energies to attack. But even giving this guy one more prize isn't enough, given the unfortunate prizing of the fire plus the double super rod hit earlier on in the game. I think Jake, had the Ares not been so good earlier on, mm -hmm. would have a win condition, would have an out in this case. But unfortunately... Just not the case. So, so Jake is slowly whittling down his yeah, own Charmander. He, ta he tackling just to slowly knock itself <laughs> out, which is very funny but very real. Uh, so it's a common line in a lot of these control matchups, with uh, especially like Roaring Moon EX using Frenzy Gouting to knock yourself yes. out to turn off counter catchers on half the turns. Very useful strategy. Uh, there is no more fire in the deck though. So even with two prize cards taken for Sky, yep. cannot attack with the Radiant Charizard. One energy shorts. Is going to promote it here. Maybe scare Sky a little bit. Yeah. Into... Oh, man. It literally just needed that one off prizes. Yes. Would have been fine. Would have been totally fine. Literally the worst two possible last prize cards. Because there would there would have been a real line here. Uh, very easy to do, honestly. You just need that one other boss. And then yep. easy two prizes. Potentially boss plus another energy plus max belt. Would knock out that Rotom for the last two prizes. But... Yeah, and credit to Jake for, for playing this uh, as well as he could with uh, kind of the, the horrible start and right. also the prizes going out the way they did. But Sky uh, just completely stifling, hitting those amazing, well-timed supporters. Going to put Jake in a checkmate position here. Jake is now completely locked unless there's something in the list that we haven't seen yet. But it would have to be something along the lines of third Super Rod, which just isn't being played in Charge mm -hmm. right now. See the draw. Nine minutes left to go. Jake has done a great job of burning down the clock and making Sky work for this win, yeah. for sure. Yeah, I don't think there's any more Ionos left either, and the yeah. Roxanne's not active. So those are the last cards Flipping in the over deck. the two prizes yeah. to show Sky yep. how unfortunate it was. And Sky taking the win, going up to one and one. Yeah, Sky with the huge win with uh, two different lists, with those turbo hands, with the turbo yes. fast win. And then the control list, uh, not even showing all the sauce of the control list, never even busting out the Luxray, too. Right. Just being in a strong position the entire game that was only dicey because of the weird prizes that happened on both sides. I really like Sky's deck selection for this mm -hmm. Conquest format. The two decks, not only, well, Snorlax, sorry, Pidgeot Control plus yep. Turbo Hands, not only do they complement their matchups well, but Sky was only able to close out that Game 3 because Game 1 and 2 were so short, right? Yeah. So Game 1 ended basically within a couple turns because Turbo Hands were able to, was able to accelerate the prize race, and you need that much time for Snorlax to win. So I think Sky did a really good job of, of choosing two decks for this format that work well together. Yeah, they work well together, and they cover a lot of different bases, yes. too. So very, very, like when you combine their matchup spreads, it feels very well-rounded uh, and very strong, where you just have a lot of really strong matchups into a lot of these top decks, like Zard, uh, Chimpao, especially. Mm -hmm. Those two are like the big ones that yes. a lot of people brought here that are very powerful decks that people are worried about. Control can deal with them pretty well. Even with Tex, it's still hard to actually get things through. And even with Tex, you still have to, like, because it's like one of two games, right? Uh, there's still a chance for the techs to not work out. We've seen Minior at, be a tech in some people's list, but Minior gets countered by Mawile. So it's really hard to actually beat this Pidgeot control deck, as we saw here yeah. in this game today. But as much as we've talked smack about Jake, he is one and one still. Yep. He did win the first Plenty round that was, off, that was off stream. So still, it's anyone's game to try and get into that top two for our top four. For each groups, yep. Yeah. We're going to go to another break while we go ahead and set up our winner's interview with Sky. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome back everybody to Chicago Clash. We just saw an amazing round two match between Sky and Jake. Uh, I guess the first two games were not very amazing, but <laughs> no. game three was one of the most ridiculous control matches I've seen. Uh, so I think that's probably a good place to start talking about things. Obviously, you know, a lot of players probably would have scooped in Jake's position uh, after a certain point, especially with his prizes. I'm sure he talked to you after the game about the prizes and how yeah. they shook out. Uh, but he kept playing for the win condition that actually became relevant uh, <laughs> for a brief moment yeah. where uh, you get you flip double Silent Tails twice in a row and you had your <laughs> Team Yells Cheer prize. So as as Jake was kind of playing through those turns and you know you, you it looked like you had a pretty strong position in the board, what was kind of going through your mind? Like how were you trying to prevent him from doing whatever he was thinking he was going to do. I think the only thing there was really just <laughs> um, trying to pull that yell cheer once Silene decided to totally flop on yeah. me um, and saying, like, 
okay, I need to have card advantage here so that I have more options into whatever he's trying to pull. Because I haven't seen the Turo yet. I mean, at this point, I assume most Zard players play Turo, mm -hmm. um, but I hadn't seen it yet. So I was just like, does he not play it? Is he going for like this Rad Zard win condition? Um, so I always kept an eye on that. That's why I started, uh, instead of passing instant charging to find that defiance vest, mm -hmm. uh, so that my Mimikyu wouldn't get knocked out. So it wasn't as easy as Zard boss game. Right. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's, it was really just interesting how things shook out in terms of, uh, the prizes and the energy and stuff. Cause the energy, mm -hmm. but those areas were so strong <laughs> in yeah. the game, like getting stubble super rod just immediately mm -hmm. ruined everything for Jake from trying to get those energies, um, uh, in play, especially with two of them. Absolutely. Prized, yeah. Right. So how, how has Aerie kind of changed control? Because I know you've played control a lot in the mm -hmm. past, too. But how has it kind of changed it for this format? Oh, Aerie is the best card in the deck. <laughs> I will say that without hesitation whatsoever, because your opponent, um, especially helping like those Lost Box matchups in particular, mm -hmm. like that was the main thing that I eyed it for. But discarding Rare Candy, discarding Super Rod, like you're saying, OK, my I'm already playing to force my opponent to use the maximum amount of their resources. So if I can cut off some of those resources while they're in hand, because it used to be like when you were playing Snorlax, all resources in hand were safe. Right. So you could just hold on to that, use them when you needed them, and then the Snorlax player couldn't do anything about it. But now they're not safe in deck and they're not safe in hand. So I can always just say, okay, this looks like a good time to airy, discard a couple influential cards. I mean, even the Poffins and the Nest Balls matter. Sure. Yeah. Um, just because the less outs my opponent has to find something that can win them the game, the better. Right. Makes a lot of sense. I know, uh, obviously, making doing a two-deck conquest thing, which I don't think anyone here has actually done before, is very <laughs> tricky, and there's like extra elements of metagaming involved in that, extra layers. Uh, Vic was commending your choice for your two decks for a couple reasons. Uh, one is because complementary matchup spread makes a lot of <laughs> sense. You're covering... Uh, control just covers a lot of those really tough, big matchups, and then Turbo Hands kind of covers you decently well for everything else. Yeah. Uh, specifically, like, Lugia was kind of probably one of your big concerns, because oh, Lugia destroys control, but then you have Turbo Hands to clean up that matchup, so you're fine. Uh, nobody ended up bringing <laughs> yeah. a uh, Lugia, but it is what it is. But I wanted to ask you because um, the other reason Vic brought up is that Turbo Hands is turbo. It's fast. You right. win games quick or you mm -hmm. lose games quick, and then you have enough time for your control and finish like a game three like that. Uh, so what were your kind of factors when you were deciding to make these uh, two decks your two decks for this? Uh, well, you've got that exactly right. I was originally going to... Um, I had my eye on the Lugia matchup, so I was originally actually going to play Arctina Aerodactyl, mm -hmm. uh, which is a deck that I've been working on um, with my with a couple of my friends and sort of uh, that's something that I did well in an online tournament with. And then so I was like, this deck is really strong. I'm going to force it. But then it occurred to me that I need to be careful about my time, right? If I'm sure, ever going to yep. a game three, Arceus kind of takes a little bit to get going. If you're playing Charon's Care, that's extra turns. Yeah, even, so, even though your turns are fast, sometimes yeah. it's still, there's a lot of turns, right? Yeah, and you got to do a lot of shuffling because you're Trinity Novaing right. every turn. So you always have to shuffle when you're attacking until your Arceus is knocked out. Mm. Um, so... Yeah, I said, okay, here's Hands. Hands is decent into Lost Box, into Chen Pao, um, really good into Lugia, which mm. was a matchup that I had my eye on. Apparently, nobody else was like, <laughs> no, I'm going to play yeah. Lugia. <laughs> that's that's fine. Um, and it's just fast. You win and lose games in a few turns. Um, it's really decisive, so I get all the time to think about and um, take time with control, sure. uh, even though I like to play control pretty fast, personally. Right. Yeah, you were playing uh, with, with great haste and speed during that last game. And Luki is actually something I want to ask you about, too, get your opinion on why nobody's played it here. Because I, I feel like, in general, people were worried about control. People brought lists that are teched for control, mm -hmm. uh, but didn't actually play things that readily beat control. Yeah. <laughs> so why do you think nobody brought Lugia? Do people just think it's bad? Um, I think that Lugia isn't necessarily bad, but I've always sort of... I've played it for a couple of like internationals, regionals, mm -hmm. and you played at UIC. Yeah, I played yes. it at uh, no, uh, NAIC uh, last year, yes. uh, and then Peoria this season. Okay. Uh, and both times I've been like, this deck is really good when it sets up. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't set up, you lose most of the time. Uh, and so I think a lot of people in this, um, just sort of this group of players, seems like the type to not necessarily rely on like high amounts of luck like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so even though Lugia's very high power will do, like in this format can do crazy amounts of damage, right. uh, you still have to get that set up. Yeah. So, like, to account for that, I did play Iron Hands, and I played Giacomo in my deck so I can, like, loop it and um, boss up t different targets to sort of just right. wipe their board of energy. Yeah. Um, but nobody ended up playing it. <laughs> nobody ended up playing it. And uh, there's a lot of Turbo Hands running around regardless, which is yeah. uh, pretty funny. But, uh, yeah, any uh, any. I know you're not doing EUIC, so this yeah. is kind of your, your main thing. Mm -hmm. um, 
did that kind of change how you approach your, your list for this event? Because I know some players are like hiding things that they're thinking about playing for EUIC. So mm -hmm. how did that kind of impact things for you? Well, my one thing is that I'm not really going to like share um, the exact contents of my control list because I know there are other people out there who I'm like working with who I'm like, here is this really good control list sure. that I like that I've worked on with a couple of different people um, that I don't want to like fully reveal. But I'm kind of just comfortable like I don't have anything to hide. Um, right. because I'm not playing in a regional until Indy. So oh, I don't yeah. even, I'm not That's even like thinking about like, now, yeah. what three is the, what is the right deck to lock in? I'm just thinking about what is the right deck for this tournament? Sure. And that's generally my philosophy on things. Like I play a lot of different decks because I believe that, um, while it is good to play the same deck over and over again to get a lot of reps in, there is also a different call for every tournament. Sure. Sure. Uh, last thing, any shout-outs you want to do, or where can people find you? Um, well, I'd just like to shout-out my main testing group, my friend group, uh, my girlfriend for always supporting me and helping me run games and sort of helping me lock onto this control list, especially uh, the mm -hmm. Turbo Hands. That's thanks to Ryan, another mm -hmm. competitor in the tournament. I was um, wondering why the lists look exactly the same. <laughs> yeah, no, they are pretty much exactly the same, I think. Um, and... If y'all want to find me, um, I'm at Skylon01 on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, that's S-K-Y-L-O-N-0-1. Cool. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sky. Congratulations Thank on you. your win. Still three rounds remaining. <laughs> Good luck to you with the rest of your rounds. I hope to see you in Top Cut. And we're going to go to a quick break before we go into the next round. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm.